welcome to another exclusive Pattern Facts TV podcast. Today we're chilling with a very, 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 very important person. His name is Ayanda Kokoza. He's a senior business developer in the Forex space. He's actually a Forex entrepreneur. Okay, we'll just be going through his journey and how it started and the steps he actually took for him to actually be who and what he is today. So we'll get straight into it. Ayanda, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, my brother. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Um, so with this whole thing, I just want us to first start maybe in, 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 in the background as to where you grew up, how you grew up, and all those things. I want that whole thing to lead us to actually what made you who you are today. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, um, I'm originally from a town... Um, which was well, previously KZN, in now Eastern Cape, called uh, Matadiele. Oh, um, Matadiele was in KZN? Yes, it was under KZN, and then there was the whole thing to switch it over to Eastern Cape, so it eventually got switched over to Eastern oh. Cape. I think there were protests, they were all over the news and everything, but then now it's, it's, it's under Eastern Cape. Okay. Um, I'm from a village there called Lugada. Um, so initially, you know, growing up, you know, I think that I wasn't, I didn't really grow up in Lukata, you know, yeah. um, being the child of diplomats, you know, my, uh, my, my parents are people um, in government. So we moved from, I think it was, I think very, very, very early in my life, we moved from uh, Matadiel and we went to Cape Town. Um, my mother was working at um, international relations at that time. My father, you know, was working at the Department of Health in the Eastern Cape. Okay. Um, in a town not so far from Matadiela called Mount Fletcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, we, we moved to Cape Town, obviously due to my uh, mother's job. Um, we lived in Cape Town for a while, and I think it was in 1995, you know, when the whole, call it, you know, um, democracy and the whole thing in South Africa happened, we moved from Cape Town and we went to Pretoria. Um, so in Pretoria, I went to... So how long did you stay in Cape Town? Though? In Cape Town, it, it must have been maybe three years, four years. Three, four years. Okay. Three years, four years before we moved to Pretoria. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, it was Pretoria, so starting a new life again. Um, I went to primary school there. I went to a primary school called Hamilton Primary School in Pretoria CBD. Um, I could say things, things, things were good, man. Like, um, I can't say, I can't... You know, say that you know things were bad at home and whatever not. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I really can't say I had it tough. You know, um, mm-hmm. I, I had it decent. You know, my my my, my parents were able to provide. Mm-hmm. You know, almost everything that we needed. You know, um, we never. How can I say? We were never in that thing that you know there's 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 no food or there's no. My parents, you know, did a very good job. Um, you know, I think that my mother as well. You know, I commend her as an iron woman. You know, she, you know, (laughs) (laughs) she, she, she really did a lot for us. Uh, My father as well, you know, critical in who I've become and the man that I've become right now, you know. Um, So yeah, from, 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 from Pretoria, you know, my mother, obviously in her career as well, she was progressing um, and she progressed to the point where, you know, she, she became um, a diplomat. So she was serving South Africa, you know, outside the country as a representative. And, you know, one of the first countries that we went to go live in was Peru. Oh, um, yeah, so I you think this is... Yeah, I've been here, man. I've been, I've been. Like, you know, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're a child of a diplomat, yeah. you know, um, our parents work on four-year contracts. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's either four years, sometimes it's a relief, maybe two years or whatever it is. So you move from one country to the next country to the next country. Mm-hmm. And, you know, look, um, as a kid, you know, it's nice because you get that exposure and everything. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I think that it was also tough, you know, socially, yeah. you know, especially going into, in, into a country like Peru, you know, with a totally new um, language mm-hmm. that you have to learn. So what I think Spanish. Spanish, yes. Oh, okay. I actually speak Spanish fluently. Is it? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. I speak Spanish 100% fluently. Actually, my previous jobs were in Spanish as well, um, as oh. I got into the digital marketing industry. But... Um, yeah, we, 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 we lived in Peru um, for a while, well, for, 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 for quite a bit of time. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like I said, you know, the, the, the social environment in Peru, you know, um, how can I say, forced you to learn the language. So yeah, I think, 
it was six months down the line, I was speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. You know, I was doing my subjects in Spanish, you know. Um, funny, <laughs> funny enough, um, in my final exam, like call it um, IGCSE, what is called matric, um, mm -hmm. I got a B for Spanish first language. Okay. So I actually did better than some of the <laughs> Spanish native <laughs> speakers. You yeah. know, I did wow. better than some of them. So, so that was like in your high school life? Yeah, that, that was high school, yes. Yeah. Um, I think then we, they, well, the, the, the systems are different. So it was called S1, S2, S3, and then you did your IGCSE, and then you did an IB. IB is basically an international standard, you know, metric that would allow you to go into any university in the world. Um, so from there on, you know, my parents moved on over them. They went to Poland. After Poland, it was Equatorial Guinea. After Equatorial Guinea, it was um, Jordan. So it was, it, it, it was just all over the place. Yeah, and <laughs> I think that, you know, I got to, I got to the point where, you know, um, I got tired of it. You know, mm -hmm. as a kid, uh, you grow up and then you make friends here. And then the next thing you have to move and then you make friends here. And then the next thing you have to move. So I thought to myself, you know what, let me, let me go back to South Africa, man. Um, I took the decision and I said to myself, I, I, I put my mother down and I said to my mother, you know what, I want to go back to South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I'm tired of this moving around, um, you know, I'm not making friends. You know, I also feel like I missed out on a huge chunk of my life, you know, being outside. Not to say that, you know, I didn't make friendships that side. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I made lifelong friendships. Didn't it make things easier though for you to kind of make friends? Because now, remember, you're moving from one place to another. Unlike us, well, most of us who are like kind of grew up in the same place for the rest of the or for the most, the most of your life, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So you kind of like have the same friends still. Mm -hmm. So you come here and you make friends, you move to another country, you're forced to make friends again. Doesn't it make it easier for you to be like kind of social? I think it makes, well, I, it makes it easier for me to be social, you know, to get along with people very well. And, you know, having worked in international digital marketing companies, you know, um, working with people of different languages and so forth, you know, it was easy for me to adapt. You know, I think that it built me for the workspace. Um, but then, you know, socially it was, how can I say, it was hard. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, you know, how can I say, children, children are mean. You yeah. know, <laughs> children, children are mean. And, you know, when you get into those um, schools or environments, you know, it's nothing like here in South Africa, you know, what you see on the movies, you know, that cool guy, you know, loser thing is a reality over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a reality there. And I think one of the things that helped me a lot you know, was that, you know, I was very sporty. Oh, you yeah. know, um, I, I was into rugby, you know, I was a pretty decent um, soccer player. Um, I played squash, I played um, badminton. Um, so I think that, you know, also being a little bit of a sports person allowed you to sort of like blend in and be that, you know, I eventually became the cool, you know, guy. The cool guy. kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. And the one thing about it, you know, they, you know, the people there, it's, it's, it's Latin people, it's Latino. So my skin color, those people were not used to it. Yeah. You know, they, 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 some of them, it was the first time they had ever seen a person with this type of skin color. You know, I, I used to get people who, who would touch me and be like, you know, is this is, is this color forever? You know, in, in winter are you gonna change? Type of a thing. So as a kid, you know, it, you know, it was it was no, it was it was. So that I think for me that was one of the things. You know, as much as you know the the culture and everything, the food was beautiful. You know, it it, it, it was a culture shock. You know, it was something that I was not used to, like walking through the mall. And as you walk through the mall, like people are like surprised and staring at you as you walk across and i think well, which country is that peru, peru. Yeah. yeah and um, i think also where we were situated in peru which was the city of lima yeah. you know there was not many people you know who are like coming from outside it was one of those you know it's either you had it or you didn't mm -hmm. you know um it's either you know the what allowed you to live there was because you know you you were well off you could afford, so, yeah. yeah so most of the people who were there were people you know, coming from Spain, coming who had naturalized into being Peruvians and whatever not. Um, funny enough, <laughs> when I had to choose schools, you know, I had two options. Um, I could either have went to an American school or a British school. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, okay, no, you know what, let me go, let me go to the British school because, you know, naturally the British school, English. Yeah. Little did I know. <laughs> so <laughs> I get there, um, everything's cool. The, 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 I mean, the school was high tech. Everything was great about it. Um, and then, you know, I get there and the only English 
I was getting was English in the class. You know, I was like, how can I say? We only spoke English when we were in class. Mm -hmm. Outside of class, it was Spanish. So now you can imagine the shock now for me, you know, as a, as a kid, you know, as a call it, I think it was 13, 14 year old kid, you know, you have to now all of a sudden, you know, that's why I was able to, 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 to sort of like learn the language Spanish so quickly because, you know, the social circumstances were, were, were forcing me and pushing me and making me, you know, uh, have to learn the language. So um, I learned the language. Um, it, was, it was, how can I say, it was easy for me. I think within six months, I was able to, 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 to start speaking Spanish and, you know, um, I became fluent in it and everything. Um, and then, you know, again, you know, it was, it, it was just school, man. It was school, you know, you wake up, you go to school. Um, obviously, being diplomats, you sort of like, how can I say, um, away from what the real country is. Mm -hmm. So when I chose this school, the British school, um, I came to the realization that the people or the children who were there were actually Peruvian people who could afford the school because yes. the, the school was expensive. So the only people who were there were people who so are you got high education. Yeah. yeah, I got yeah, I got high education. Funny enough, hey man, I didn't I didn't like school, bruh. <laughs> I didn't like school because um I, I I only ended up at matric. You know, I so never I never there's no college university. I never furthered my education because um I think it was in two thousand late two thousand and nine, early two thousand and ten was when I decided to make the move um, back to South Africa. Also, you know, that was the time of the World Cup. World so Cup, yeah. I thought to myself, hell man, let me go back to South Africa. Plus the World Cup is being hosted there. You know, let, let, let me go back. Um, and you know, when I came back, you know, I, I, did, I just thought to myself, I always told myself, man, there's gotta be something more than just going to school. You know, my parents could have afforded me to go to school. I mean, I think I'm, I'm the least educated at home. Um, I think that my, if, if I count at home, there's, um, there's seven of us. Um, all of them have got a tertiary qualification. Seven siblings. Yeah, seven siblings, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of them have got a tertiary qualification. I mean, my brother is in the process of a PhD right now. Um, I think that the, the least that they're doing is honors. And I'm this, this, the, the black sheep, you know, who, <laughs> who just decided that, you know what, let me, let me, let, let me move away type of a thing so I moved away and um, my first job I was working for IBM for IBM yes. just hold it right there can you just maybe take us to a quick ad break in Spanish though in Spanish <laughs> <laughs> okay okay well um, ahora estamos aquí con Python FX y vamos a estar para una pausa los volveremos a ver muy pronto muchas gracias whatever <laughs> Take it off from where we, where, we, where we basically left everything off, okay? So, from where we left things off, we take it now after your move back to South Africa. And all of a sudden, you capitalized with this Spanish. Yeah, no, yeah, hey, man, I mean, like, that's, that's why I, I still say today, you know, my mother, if it wasn't for my mother and her traveling, you know. Till today, for me, man, hey, my mother, like she's she played a huge role. She, she played, yeah, she played, she played a huge, huge, huge role. I think without her, you know, this thing of me not wanting to go to school and whatever, and I don't know where I would have ended. You mm. know, um, she played a huge role. So, um, I leveraged on what was left of the industry then, and then you know, eventually, you know, it just got completely shut down until yeah. you know there was legislation and stuff put into place, which happened at a much later stage. Mm -hmm. um, when, um, during that space, you had to obviously live. I had to live, yeah. I think it, this was 20, 20, 2013, late, going now into 2014. Um, so yeah, 2014, I was like, okay, I'm, again, you know, I'm on the internet, I'm searching, you know, mm -hmm. what can I do? How to make money online? Because now I've just realized, mm -hmm. and I've, I've actually, funny enough, this whole pandemic and this whole COVID thing, I, I, I can't say that I foresaw it, but then I had in my head that eventually, and one thing that the lady from the UK told me that one day everything is going to be online. Yeah. Whether we like it or not, we're going to move into an area that we are going to start having everything online. Yeah, sure. And funny enough, you know, it, 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 it hit much more sooner. 
you know, because of the COVID and um, everything that has been happening in the world, it happened, you know, much more sooner. Like back then, yeah, I knew. Like, forced down our throats. Exactly. Back then, I knew what Zoom was. Zoom existed. People are only starting to find out about Zoom now. Back then, I knew Zoom, what Zoom was. I was using Zoom, you know, to 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 conduct all of my meetings with people outside the country. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, um, I, 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 I was searching around and then I came across, you know, um, an ad, you know, which said, um, it, was, it, was, it was a salesperson. So the ad was like salesperson. And then it said um, 12,000 Rand basic salary, uncapped commission. And I'm like, uncapped commission. And I'm like, I like the sound of this because this means money to me. I love money, <laughs> you know, I love money. And I think that one of the reasons why I went into the industries that I did was, you know, primarily because of money. But then, you know, when you, when you, when, when you get into something that you unknowingly get into and then you end up enjoying and you feel like, you know, this is what you want to do type of a thing. So I did that and um, I found this ad, you know, 12,000 basic salary, unlimited commission. And I'm like, yo, this is it. I'm definitely going for this job. I went for the job interview. Funny enough, I was, I was even late, you know, because um, I missed the message that gave me the address to the place. So I was so determined to get to the place when I spoke to the lady over the phone. I remember she had said it was in Pretoria East and she had mentioned a suburb, you know, and I actually just went and I took a taxi straight there. You know, I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I said, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just told myself, you know what? When I get there, I'll see what's happening. You know, I'll find my way when I get there and I'm, I'm on my phone, I'm trying to contact the number. It's not going through, obviously, because they've not started, you know, office, um, office hours yet. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, I got to the neighborhood. I was walking around for a while. Eventually, you know, I called, somebody picked up. Luckily enough, I was actually on the street parallel to where I needed to go. Mm-hmm. So that having taken the decision to say that, look, I'm going anyways. So um, I moved from, the, from, the, from that street and I went into the next one. When I got there, everybody was gone because I was late. You know, um, the interviews had been done. So as I walk out, I meet a guy. You know, he was, um, his name is Billy Twisson. He, he, he's the guy that made me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm who I am right now because of that guy. Um, and this guy, man, when he came to me, he was, he was dressed so well. You know, he commanded this. There was just something about him, you know. So when I went there, you know, I greeted him and he said, hey, how are you? Nice guy, you know. He said, hey, what are you here for? I'm like, well, I'm, I was here for an interview, um, but then, you know, I got here late, so I missed the interview. He happened to be the CEO of the company, <laughs> you know, and I was like, you know, I, I got here late, I missed the interview, so um, they told me that, you know, I should apply again and maybe I'll get another interview. And he was like, no, come through to my office. I went through to his office. We sat there. I think it was for about maybe two hours we spent just speaking. You know, obviously I was telling him where I was from, my experiences and everything. And he was like, you know what, brother, come back on Monday. You know, I'll have a contract ready for you. You can start work. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, bro, just come back on Monday and you can start. Cool stuff. Hey, I, I had a job. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, 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 all of a sudden, you know, I had a job and I was like, okay, awesome. Came back on Monday. Now, no, no, yeah, came back on Monday. So the training was a week. So you went through the week training and then on Friday, that's when you started working. But then now, that's when I came to the realization that this was hardcore sales. Mm-hmm. But then the, the, the mentorship of that guy and his, his um, training program was, was so good. Like the guy, man, he's, he's a legend, bro. Like if you ask me right now, who's the best salesperson in South Africa, I don't think twice I'll tell you Billy Twisson. Okay, so he, I spent that week, you know, with them. And then the last day, you know, um, I think then my, my parents were already in Poland. So we were living alone um, in, a, in an apartment um, in Equestria in Pretoria East. So, you know, I was traveling between Equestria and um, it was Fairy Glen, yes, between Pretoria and Fairy Glen every day. So that Friday, I only had money to go to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't have money to come to work. 
But then now I had been pleading my parents for money for so much. You know, like yeah. now I had they, I was already known as the black sheep, as the rebel <laughs> in the family, <laughs> that I had as always wanting money and whatever not. Yeah. What are you going to do with money? So it had gotten to a point where I was almost like cut off. Because now I was quitting jobs, first of all, you know, I was, I was yeah, I didn't want to go to school. Um, yeah. I was spending the whole day inside my room. So like my parents were sort of like, you know, questioning like, mm, what is I end up doing with this, guy? with this life type of a thing? So when I went to, to, to work that day, I only had faith to go to work. Mm -hmm. I didn't have faith to come back. Mm -hmm. um, so now that's when I realized that the job is actually, um, it's field sales. So, meaning that I would have needed a car for the job, which oh. I did not have then, because, you know, obviously, if you quit jobs, you miss installments, they take the car, and then, you know, you all of a sudden. So now I realized that, oh, damn, I'm going to need a car. You know, I'm going to need petrol. I'm going to need, you know, money, basically. And I had booked myself appointments for the, for the entire weekend, and I told myself, you know what, this is make or break it. The nice thing about it is that it was, the commission was being paid to you immediately, so... You would um, work to work today, and then your payment would be paid on the same day, That's type right. of a thing. Yeah. So as long as you submitted the paperwork and it was confirmed by our head office, um, the company was Stock Market College. Mm -hmm. So this is when now you know the the, the, the forex and the trading starts going in. Mm -hmm. By the way, when I when, when I started, also, was it Billy Twisson? Billy Twisson. Billy Twisson is it the owner of the firm? He he was the he was the he was a distributor. Oh. of Stock Market College. So he was like a, call it a mini franchise yes, yes, yes. of Stock Market College. So that's when the whole, how can I say, the, 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 this, that's where FX starts it for me. Mm -hmm. By the way, when I started selling Stock Market Education, I knew nothing forex about trading. Forex trading, about trading, stock market shares, nothing. But then Billy Twilson's presentation and how he was was so good that you know, I, 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 I immediately was able to get into it, you know. I just told myself, you know what, let me stick to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the script that they gave me, let me work it, and let me just push, and then... You just had to master the, the script. I just had to master the script. So I mastered the script. I went out on Friday. I worked on Friday. I worked on Saturday. I worked, you know, Sunday as well. I came back, and I was top agent for the, for, for, for the weekend. You know, I was top agent in the company. I think that weekend only I made about 30,000 rand in commissions just for that just for that weekend. So here I am, I'm coming back on Monday, I'm coming back with all of this paperwork. By the way, I think I had I, I did about 10 deals. Nobody did close to that. The next person behind me had done one deal, you know? <laughs> and I came there, I submitted that deal, like these people couldn't believe it. Like, what the hell? Like how? And how did you get all yeah, how did you? And, and I got there, I submitted, because for me, it was make or break. You know, it was either this or, you know, it's, it's the end of the game. Yeah, the, the yeah, the, yeah, the game. <laughs> yeah, remember now, I, my last, taxi back then was 12 Rand. Mm -hmm. So instead of going home on Friday, I went to appointments and I told myself, you know, I'm going to hustle money to get back home when I'm in town. Yeah. So in town from Friday, I already had appointments booked. So I told myself, look, let me go to town, let me go do appointments and everything, and then I'm. I'm going to see how I come back. I don't remember exactly how I came back, but, you know, I ended up at home that Friday mm. night. And, you know, that, that's, that's where it all began. Mm. Um, I think from that very weekend, like the guy, the, the, the Billy Twisson said to me, man, you know what? Let me put up something else for you. Because clearly, I mean, if you're able to get this, and he told me, look, it's one in a million persons that you're going to get like you who prospers and actually uses it the way that you have. I mean, you know, he, he made me, he promoted me to like a junior franchise owner. Wait, so one weekend, just in a weekend. Just in a weekend. Damn. So he was like to me, yeah, man, I think that I can work with you, you know, yeah. like, let's, let's start building a team for you. Mm -hmm. So that very same week, I started recruiting. You know, I started recruiting my own team. I started recruiting my own team of say, mind you, I don't know the first thing about trading. I'm selling trading education. Mm -hmm. But then <laughs> the script was just so... How can I say it was so double-edged and sharp that you know I I I got it right from the get-go. So I did that. Um, I built my own team. Um, and one thing I did that I, I looked at people who were close to me. You know, I built a team of people, you know, who were close to me, who were friends and everything. And you know, that's where it, that's where it, it all began. So I was a junior franchise owner right now. I was running my own team of salespeople and 
I was making money from when they were selling, so I, w- I was good. Life was good. Yes. Um, that's interesting. So how long did you do that? How long did you do that? I did that. It was it was on and off. I think for, for the most of my life, for the most of my trading, you know, I was at with Stock Market College. Um, you know, they, they were, there was a lot of guys. You know, I moved around franchises. Um, I worked with different guys. I think um, there was also a network marketing side mm-hmm. to Stock Market College called mm-hmm. Stock Biz, and you know, I got into that. As well, I did very well at that. I was one of the top network marketers. Um, and, you know, I was, I was building myself. But then, you know, I think that sometimes, you know, as a, as a person, you have your highs and you have times where you lose, you know, your motivation yes, and yes, you yes, think yes, to yourself, you know what, um, let me wake myself up again. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, how can I say, let me regroup type yes. of a thing. And I think one of the things that Billy Twilson always told me is that, you know, um, he used to tell me that I'm a crybaby, mm-hmm. that I feel sorry for myself all of the time. And he says, like, Ayanda, I can just see it in your face when you're not making sales. So now I had gotten used to the constant money. That yeah, the yeah. money was not coming out. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, yeah I would be depressed, kind of type of a thing. And then he says that, Ayanda, I can already see it in your face when you're not making money. You're walking down like this and whatever. So he said to me, Ayanda, brother, whether you have one rand or a million rand in your pocket, chest up, chin up. You know, positive mental attitude. You know, even when you're interviewing people and you're training people, you know, those people can't see that in you. Mm. You know, you can't, you know, like I, negativity, I can say that is, is contagious. Yeah, it's, it's, very, a, very yes, contagious. it's a disease, you know. And mm. he taught me that to say that, look, don't do that. You know, always like, so I had to learn that, you know, sometimes things, because it was so much money coming so much so quickly, I would spend it. You know, mm. I would I would make 50 grand in a weekend. I would come the next week or the weekend, you know, Monday, and Senamad, like I have to be, you, you know, have to yeah, like, I have to, yeah, I have to. And, you know, he also told me to say, look, have reserves, put money away. But then, you know, when you get 50 grand at that age, you think to yourself, yo, you know, it's a lot of money. And you, once you start getting to 100 grand, 200 grand, you know, it's, it's a lot of money. Lot and of money. you start spending it, you know. It, for me, well, it was watches, it was clothes, um, it was, it was, you know, um, women, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was girls, it was alcohol, yeah. you know, it was, it was just, life. yeah, it was, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was the life because, you know, again, you know, the, the, some of the guys that I met, you know, um, there was a friend of mine that I met at Stock Market College, um, God bless his soul, he passed away um, two years ago, Manny Figuera. Um, you know, me and him, you know, got together in a franchise. Again, you know, at Stock Market College, remember now, I was going and leaving because mm. now, because of how I was programmed and my attitude, yeah, yeah, I would go, just, yeah, yeah, I would go, yeah, yeah, I would go, yeah, I would go and I would come back. I would go because, but then because the, 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 the reward for the job was so lucrative, I would always come back, mm. you know, I'd always go somewhere and then I'd be like, ah, oh, let me go back. And then I'd have to go back and I'd have to apologize. Like and then, <laughs> yes, exactly. Because now I was so used to the money. I, I was, I was going back and forth. I was coming and then I would go back. I was coming. And then, you know, after a while, you know, this back and forth, I made money. Um, me and him, you know, had the awesome, awesome, awesome times. Um, we had a good working relationship. I mean, we were legends in the game. Like we were, we were Wolf of Wall Street. You yeah. know, when <clears throat> when people talk Wolf of Wall Street, like you guys did the life. Me and Manny lived it. You yeah. know, we, we we lived it that way. We we you know obviously having come from online gaming, you know, I eventually started you know also um, gambling. You know, I was going to the casino, so oh, um, yeah. my. Uh, I was bleeding money, yeah, I was bleeding money, you know, gambling, you know, the drinking, the girls and everything. And it, it, it got to a point where, how can I say, it got, it, 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 it got, it, 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 it got a toll on me, like it hit me. You know, I, I realized that I'm working in this vicious circle where I'm making money and I'm bleeding it. I make money and I'm bleeding it. I so make you money had to change that. I had to change. I had to but change. I also everything. think that goes with, with growth. I mean, mm-hmm. we, I, I think most of us have been through it, especially if you don't know money. Exactly. And it comes and you're like, I mean, and you don't know what to do with it. You don't know what to do with it's, it. It's, it's a lot of money. You don't know. Like, I remember, like, sometimes I used to settle bills for 20, 30,000 rand a night oh, at clubs. And I think to myself, like, today, you know, I yonder today, I think to myself, yes, sis, 
20,000 rand was a lot of money back then. Yeah. 20,000 rand is still a lot of money today. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was doing that back then. And, you know, I, it, it hit me, you know. Um, I also had a child. Mm. So when I had a child, now I realized, oh, you know what? If, I, if I'm, yeah, exactly. If, if things are different, you know, I need to have reserves. You know, the child's going to be sick. The child's going to need this. I need to have money readily available to, to do these type of things. And I think that's when now I found out trading. Oh, yeah. Because now remember, I'm, I, I'm trying to make money and I'm like, mm. I've been selling this for all of it. I think this was almost like four years into it. So, so, you, sold, <laughs> so, so, so you sold a, a, a trading course for four years. And not a single day did you open a trade and say, Never. <laughs> never. I was not even worried. They used to tell us that, yeah, open a demo account. I never even opened a demo account, my brother. I didn't, I just, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't care. Yeah. You know, I was a salesperson. The pitch that we were given was very good. So I just used the pitch. Where's, 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 where's the, um, what's his name? The CEO. Um, Are you guys still in good terms? Um, we are still in good terms. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, after that, you know, I ended up working with the CEO of, 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 of um, Stock Market College, Harvest Van Kletsen. Again, you know, he was very key in sort of like, you know, building me, you know, mm-hmm. above what I was from Billy Twisson. Um, Billy Twisson left the company. I stayed. Um, and then there was Manny, Manny as well. You know, he, he built me a little bit there. And um, yeah, man, like... You know, I, 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 I realized that, okay, you know what, I need to stop with this right now. And I, I, I needed another source of income. Apart from this, I needed to start getting money for elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So I decided, okay, look, let me try this trading thing. Now let me try it. Now let me try it. <laughs> so I, obviously, because I was an employee, you could attend the classes for free. So I started attending the classes and everything, you know, there were guys there. Think of that. So, <laughs> you, you had all this information. I had all of it. Is available for you. All of this time, it was there. Yeah. I used to introduce people to trading and these people, you know, would start making money. I didn't care. You were making your own money. I was making my own money, you know, selling to these people. And, you know, I think that had I taken it up, you know, much more earlier, you know, I I would have been very far. And then that's when now the whole affiliate and IB thing, you know, started ringing in my head. You know, affiliate, IB, these people. Um, I met a guy who told me, but then, you know, when you take people to a broker, these commission that you make. And I'm like, huh? And I'm like, but how? And he's like, no, every time the person trades. And because you're always, you, you're used to commission. Anyway. Yeah, I'm used to commission anyway. So like, it's, it's, it's nothing new to me. I, I don't mind, I wouldn't have minded to do it because it, 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 it was just, I was already doing it, but mm-hmm. then now I was just not getting the commission, you know? Yeah. And this guy told me that, you know, there's money made, you know, there's, um, I started with, I also attended a, a course by Quibus Kemp. Oh, yeah. uh, I actually have an interview with Quibus Kemp Quib- in the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. so that, that's, that's when I, so I think that he's, um, his course back then co- cost, um, I think it was 4,000 Rand. Yeah. yeah, it was 4,000 Rand. This was 2016. Yeah, this, yeah, around, around about there. Yeah, yeah. I took, you know, not me, a friend of mine took a course from me. Mm-hmm. 2016. Yeah. So, by the way, this was I was introduced to Quibus by another friend of mine, you know, who I had also introduced into trading, and he was constantly asking, but then why aren't you trading? Mm-hmm. But then you always had the story that, yes, I am trading, uh, my trading is going well, whatever, whatever, whatever. So you always had that one trade that you would talk about <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the presentation. So, yeah, um, yeah man, and then I, I started with Quibus. Um, and that I think that's when you know guys like you know Sandy Lachesi started showing up into the space. Mm-hmm. Um, your Sianda Blosses um, started showing up in the space. Your Prince Mazibukos mm-hmm. were showing up in the space. You know all of those guys. You know were were were, were showing up in the space. You know your your ref wings. You know were, were were coming up. And then all of a sudden now I was seeing that you know what there's money to be made in this thing. You know. Oh, because that is when I mean there was a lot of. Uh, yes, yes, that's when the buzz started now. Yeah. And remember now, here I am, I'm at Stock Market College. At that time, you know, um, the company was not developed 
you know, in terms of forex, mm. you know, oh, you guys are still in stock. Yes, stock we are chain. still in yeah, in, in the stock market, the JSE. Mm. Like basically, I used to sell people, sell to people using a JSE handbook. Yes. So yes. I would take that hand. I'm sure a lot of people when they hear this, they're gonna remember these guys <laughs> yeah. who used to come with them with JSE handbook. So I would come with the JSE handbook and I'd show you that okay, the share price for MTN was twenty rand. So if you took five thousand rand and you bought shares, you would have had so many shares. Now when you sell these shares two years down the line, it's 25 rand. How much have you made? If you took your money and you put it in the, into the bank, you would have made, <laughs> you know, so, so, so that's what the, that was the thing. And then, you know, I realized that, you know, this trading thing, there's money being made. There's, there's, there's people, that's when now, you know, you, you um, um, again, I saw a video, cash flow mobile, you know, bank, bank. And I'm like, and I'm seeing those bank banks and I'm like, yo, man, this is like, 10,000 US dollars a pop kind yeah. of a thing. And I'm like, whoa, I want to do this. Yeah, you know? They've been doing it. Yes, man, they've been doing yeah. it. They've been yeah. in the industry for a while, man. And, you know, I, I thought to myself, you know what? I can also do this because I had that PMA. Yeah. And I was like to myself, PMA. But this, time, but this time it didn't work out didn't work out I with, remember, with, the trading, with the trading because now remember I was so much in a rush to get into it when I when I first got into it my first deposit was a hundred thousand rand and I know you I know you blew it <laughs> I blew it <laughs> <laughs> yes Coming from a demo, I mean, I was trading demo on a hundred thousand as well, yeah. by the way. But then I was not emo emotionally attached to the money because it's not my money. Hundred thousand rand, I was with a foreign broker, um, it's a broker in Australia. So I went to the bank, did the whole, you know, wire transfer, whatever. Boom, 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 bam. The money was in my account. But then now, I think, I think I, I, I only placed it was five trades. <laughs> that I did so that I how long that, that took like a week to go or less? It must have been a couple of days, right? So three <laughs> days. But then one thing I did is that I, I, I split it. I think it was $4,000 in the one account and $4,000 in the other account. Mm -hmm. So I had, yes, was still, was yeah. still, yeah, was still, was still, well, the rand was low, but then it was, it was, it was good exchange mm -hmm. if you had dollars. $4, so, yeah. um, I took half, I put it on, on one account and I took the other half and I put it on another account. On this account, I, it was, my brother, it must, yeah. have, it must have been three days, you yeah. know? And I think that the leverage that I was, I, I, I was trading on was so high mm. and I didn't know. Yeah, you didn't understand um, all I, these things. I only realized back then, you know, that the leverage I was trading on was like, was, was ridiculous. You know, as a novice, I couldn't, I shouldn't have been trading. Yeah. In, with that type of leverage. And I think that, you know, right now with South African legislation, you know, and how things have evolved so far um, and how people, you know, sign up to brokers, I feel like the FSCA has done a very good job, you know, when it comes to protecting people, yes. when it comes to that. I think you'll notice now if, you know, your, your broker is reputable and they're honest and, you know, they, 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 they have got good intentions, you know, they'll have that set of questions that they ask you yes. you know to say that you know how is your experience and whatever i was never asked those questions so it was you know? set up and yeah you know because yeah, yeah. back then those things were never there those things are new now exactly because mm -hmm. i had to open forex accounts now but mm -hmm. they knew now. they knew now it was then it was open an account deposit I mean, even documents came later. came later you know yeah. after you had parted ways with money your money was there and you know you you were trading. So um, I took that money. Um, I, well, I lost the $4,000 on the other account. I lost it, I think it was in two days, three days at most. And then, you know, now the same guy who had introduced me to Corpus Kemp was like, you know, get an account manager. You know, get somebody who's going to trade for you. And I'm like to myself, boom, that's it. That, that, that's it. <laughs> Let me tell, like, I just want to put it out to everybody out there, you know, um, the worst thing you can ever do. I always um, tell people that. The worst thing, you know, I mean, even us, you know, in the industry, you know, we've done the mistakes, you know, we've learned from it. Um, I always tell people, you know, whose hands is your hard-earned money better in? Mm. The hands of somebody that you don't know mm. 
Because they don't care about this money. They're not attached to it. They exactly. Work hard they're not attached to it. Yeah, they're yeah. not attached to it. So, guys, account management and all of those things, biggest mistake. Don't do it. Rather learn for yourself. Slowly but surely, you're going to get there. Um, try avoid it as much as you can. These, 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 these technologies out in the industry right now, such as copy trading that you can do, you know, um, PAM, MAM accounts. Okay, in South Africa, PAM and MAM is no longer allowed, but they, you know, there's copy trading. Copy trading. These, 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 these um, social, social trading. By the way, you know, with the broker that I'm currently partnered up with right now, you know, these guys, you know, international standard, multi-regulated. They also have a platform there, you know, where you can get into IX social trading where you can follow the trades of other successful people, you know, rather than getting somebody else to do it, you know, you rather do that mm -hmm. and you manage your risk, you know, when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, I think you know the story. Um, it blew. It blew. Yes. You know, it also so you, 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 you find that account, you gave him the login details, they traded the account, it blew. He blew it, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that was, that was, that was <laughs> 100k gone, you know, in a space of about a week. And I was like, yes, this man, what is going on? Clearly, you know, this thing, this thing is a huge scam. Yeah. You know? And I think that's where like most people are actually kind of stuck mm. into mm -hmm. this. I don't know if it's a if, if it's a lazy kind of mentality. It's, it's lazy, it's lazy mentality, brother, because at the end of the day, you know, you can learn and do it yourself. Mm. You know, um, I've got a buddy of mine, I introduced him, I think it was in October. You know, I'm speaking to him right now, you know, he's withdrawing 10 grand a pop mm. type of a thing, you know, um, because he, he took time and he learned, and you know, cool. and, and that's all, right? You manage your own money, you learn, you know, it's not, one thing I don't want to say is that it's easy, you know, it's, it's definitely not easy, even myself, you know, being where I am right now, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a, I visit trading type of a thing, so I'm not full on trading because um, I came to the realization that there's bigger money to be made, you know, in the business side of it. Yeah. Yo, so, so you are mostly a, a forex entrepreneur than a trader. Exactly, basically. exactly. Because, you know, one thing I realized that, you know, there's a business to this thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not only about trading. Because even, you know, in trading with me and emotions and, you know, I can say that greed used to get the best part of me because even after my first hundred grand and I started depositing after that and, you know, I was, I was, I was trading with different brokers and whatever not, I used to make 50 grand today, tomorrow I'd lose it all, yeah. you know, because yeah, I'd, be sure, I'd be sure. trading certain lot sizes on that day and it would be going well, I'll build up gradually, you know, I'll be able to take a 10,000 account to a five, 50,000 rand account, maybe in the space of a week, come Monday, 5.00, boom, I lose it all, you know, um, risk management, mm -hmm. you know, um, so yeah, I think, you know, I, I've learned a lot, um, I learned my lessons, I think that one of the, the, the things that, you know, Forex trainers out there always say to people, when people don't want to pay for education, is that, you know, I paid my dues, yeah. you know, I paid my dues through blowing accounts. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's very important for people to understand that. Yeah, I mean, for you to be where you are today, I mean, look how long we've been talking now. Mm. This whole journey is what actually led you to be who and what you are today. It didn't just take you, you know, a year no. for you to say, you know what, I'm going to focus on this because of my strengths mm -hmm. as an individual, right? So those are things that people obviously have to understand. Yeah, uh, people, pe people forget, you know, as, look... There's, there's a lot of people out there in the industry, you know, who who offer certain services, who do certain things and whatever not. I'm not saying that all of them, you know, are credible and people that you would want to work with type of a thing. But then, you know, if you choose the right institution, if you choose the right people, um, obviously, you know, you will be, um, how can I say, um, linked in the right way. You would get the education right and all of that. It's just getting to choose the right people yeah. for them but then guys you know it's not it's not free man like these people have been through a lot they've um they pay their dues for sure so yeah. when you want to learn it's like if you go to to vets right now and you tell them look i want to be a doctor and you say but then, no don't worry i'll pay when i start working as a doctor it doesn't work like that it doesn't work like that you know you pay up front you get the education you know some people out there offer signals they offer mentorship and whatever not guys you have to pay for yeah, but it's now it's it's now really hard for, for, for people to differentiate between who's real and who's not. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. 
Um, I think, you know, that has been taken care of to a certain extent in South Africa where, you know, they are licensed institutions. You know, these companies in South Africa right now, you know, who are not only licensed to give education, but then, you know, they are licensed by Bank CETA. Mm-hmm. You know, meaning that these people are licensed by Bank CETA, so the education that you get from them, you know, is Bank CETA accredited um, type of a thing. So, you know, people should look out for that. People should go to people who are credible, people who are registered, um, people, you know, who, who have been in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, don't go and find a post on Facebook, mentorship and whatever not, click on it, pay the person. Obviously, you know, it's gonna end in tears. This <laughs> <laughs> is the cars and, 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 yes. and, and, and the lifestyle, obviously, that people mostly fall in love with. Exactly. And they think that because now this guy has this, they think I'm gonna now, have it. They, they think it's easy, you know, and it's, it's, it's not easy, man. Like, guys, go out there, pay your dues, go and learn. Um, the industry is real, man. You can make money in it. You must remember that what we do and what trading is, 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 is essentially doing is the very same thing that the banks do with your money. You know, you, the banks take your money and they invest it. Mm-hmm. The sure. banks take your money and they invest it in, in foreign exchange. They invest it in property. And they, they just do it on your behalf and give you, you know, close to nothing for it type of a thing. Whereas you can do it yourself. So how would you then advise you to do um, they must have? How would you advise the importance of, of, of patience, because I think what kills people more than anything is is patience and, and, and that instant gratification. That I want it now, now type of a thing. And, and I think that kills more people than anything. Yeah, no, look, definitely, definitely does. Um, I think that it goes back to the to the um, room was not built in a day. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't go in right now and want to start making money. But then one thing I also want to advise, you know. Um, I think um, my, my, my previous um, mentor, Hardis Van Pletsen, says it very well that, you know, if you get on a demo and you stick on a demo too long, you're going to demo yourself to death. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> you want to you, you wanna, you wanna open up an account, you want to deposit money. Yes. You know, I always say that don't, go, don't have the demo, but then, you know, don't, 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 don't stick too much onto it because you're going to demo yourself to death and... There's no real emotion attached to the money that's in a demo account. You know, you want to put money into a live account and then you want to have emotions attached to that money because you've worked for it. And the moment you lose it, you know, it's going to be painful. And then you're going to say, okay, I've burnt. You know, it's like, it's like a little kid, you know, when they touch a hot stove, you know, they touch and they burn. Second time around, that kid is not going to touch the same stove. It's the same with trading, you know. Mm-hmm. First time around, you, you want to do something, you burn, you lose money. And as a result, when you burn, you lose money, you're like, okay, no, I don't want to do it again. Let me work around. Oh, okay, if I want to hold something that's hot, let me use this. And trading is called risk management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, obviously, it takes time to learn those things. And t- exactly. That's the whole process. Gonna that's the whole process. Guys, like, pay for mentorship. Get somebody to guide you. Um, it's, it's, it's not as easy as they, they, they make it out to be. You know, um, forget the flashy cars, houses, and all of that. You know, that's not trading. You know, um, there's, 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 there's work that needs to be put. It's a career, bro. There's people who are working, and they do this thing full time. Sure. You know, so especially now when you're getting somebody to mentor you, it means that that person has to stop trading and mentor you. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've, I've seen on social media, a lot of people ask, but then um, if you are making money trading, why are you charging us? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you're saying that, you're saying that now, and mm-hmm. you, you, you don't even charge people for trading. You don't even train people. No, no, I don't even train people. And here I am, you know, putting out people who are, I commend the people who are doing this training, you know. Um, I feel like there has to be recognition behind these people, you know, who are doing all of this training because it's not, it's not an easy journey, man. It's not, easy journey. it's not an easy journey. But also, we must also maybe just emphasize the fact that even with the guys that are training, they must also just be blunt honest. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a group of guys that I'm training now and I, I tell them every night, like... Mm-hmm. Most of you guys, like there's like 80 people in the next one, most of you guys are going to fall off along the way. Exactly. In the next coming three months, I'm probably working with 10, 15 people. Mm-hmm. Because now most people obviously just give up along the way because they're like, it's not exactly. it's not what I thought it was. You know what I'm saying? Because now it always it's like it's like when you start a career, 
like a lot of people university they fall they fall off mm -hmm. because now let's say for example you start you want to be a medical doctor first year second year third year when you get into the fourth year you start realizing Ooh, <laughs> like um, let me change careers you know yeah. let me go into something else type of a thing the exact same thing happens with trading you know because the people start realizing that okay now it's not it's not it's not as, as glamorous it's, it it's not as glamorous as it looks those people pay their dues bruh Great. Now let's move on to now your business development career, right? So I think that kind of shaped you to yes. who you are now, which is a business development. A business development, business development. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. How can I say? Um, I think the thing there was for me, you know, um, seeing a lot of people burning um, with a lot of brokers. You know, there's a lot of brokers that have come into the South African space, you know, just to milk us because, you know, um, Somehow, you know, as South Africans, we've been labeled as, you know, an easy target or mm. people who are quick, you know, to, to, to take out money, you know. That's why there's a lot of scams that run around South Africa, you know, people getting SMSs, you've won 200,000 rand at Omo. Like, you don't even lose Omo in your house, but then you believe that you won 200,000 rand from Omo. You didn't even enter a competition. Yeah, so... Um, a lot of people took advantage of South Africa because of that, you know, where they came in with unregulated um, brokers and everything. And one of the things that I always do, especially when I partner up with a broker, regulation, mm -hmm. you know, um, support, you know, um, the swiftness of, 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 of withdrawals, because there's nothing more important than when you know you 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 yeah. you've put your money into a, a broker, you've made money right now. You feel like that money is within your reach. It's your money. You want it as soon as you possibly can. So, um, I I I went through a journey where I I I I sort of like searched for brokers, you know, who would offer that, you know, brokers who were regulated. Um, you know, I think that we would understand right now in the in the, in the brokerage industry, there's a book, there's B book. You know, um, I think South Africa right now is, is doing the FSCA and South African regulation is doing a very good job at getting away with, with um, B books. So what B books do is that they burn and churn a trader. Mm -hmm. You know, for them, they just in it for the money. You get there, you blow the account, they make the money. Whereas with, 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 with your A book, your, 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 your money is institutionalized. Mm -hmm. You know, your money is, is placed with a liquidity provider. They take the risk of if, whether or not you, you make money. Um, I mean, they take the risk of you making money. And also, obviously, you know, if you lose money, you lose it's it to them. Money, yeah. But then it's people with, you know, with billions of dollars, you know, to, 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 to cushion that type of a thing. And I think that the thing that has happened in South Africa is that, you know, um, people have, have been hit hard by bee booking brokers. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of them. Yeah, exactly. Bee booking brokers, people who trade against you, um, people, you know, who, who, who manipulate the markets. Um, you know, I don't want to mention names or anything, but then, you know, these things, we've seen the brokers come in and out of South Africa, yeah. um, you know, coming to, 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 to burn and churn, you know, our traders here. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's just such a shame. And, you know, one of the things that I, I, I always focused myself on, you know, when it came to, to, to any broker that I partner up with, you know, um, is regulation, support, and um, what's this? How quick is it to get my money? How, do, how quickly do I get my money out of, 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 of the broker? Because there's nothing, you know, as, as, as bad as, you know, making money with a broker and not being able to, 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 to withdraw a type of a thing. So the, 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 the broker that I've aligned myself with right now, and by the way, I never really ever worked for a broker. It's, it's one of the first times where I'm actually working for a broker. So you can imagine that when I, when I came to these guys, you know, I did thorough research. Yeah, did you, you know, did I your did, due diligence. Yeah, I did, I, did my, I did my due diligence, you know, a multi-regulated broker, you know, um, they, they've been in the industry right now for more than, you know, 10 years. Um, they initially started in the institutional space and... You know, they right now going into retail trading and everything. So it's honest people, you know, it's straightforward people, you know, it's good service, you know, premium support, you know, quick withdrawals. Um, again, you know, the, 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 the social trading as well for people who are not experienced when it comes to trading. And, you know, I think that with my, with my business development and, you know, um, how I got into it and what I, I wanted to achieve with that, 
was, you know, together these guys who have been IPs, you know, with all of these other brokers and tell them, look, brother, it's not about quick money, big money right now. Go to a broker where you're going to have sustainability. Mm -hmm. Go to a broker that is going to care about you as a partner. Mm -hmm. You know, go to a broker that is going to want to develop you, mm -hmm. you know, as, 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 as a partner. No, don't go to somebody who's going to want to burn and churn you, you know, burn you and then get rid of you and get someone else in your space type of a thing. Go to a broker, you know, who's going who's gonna to offer you stuff, you know, when it comes to marketing, you know, brokers, you know, who can negotiate with you when it comes to sponsoring seminars, you know, brokers who are going to be transparent with you, you know, brokers who are going to give you, you know, a back office terminal where you're going to be able to see, manage your accounts well and whatever not, you know, get, go to a broker with transparency, you know, and I think that the broker that I'm aligned right now with, you know, has all of that. And that is why, you know, I went and I chose them, you know, having not really worked for a broker and wanting to rope in these guys who are IBs to say that, look, here's, here are people, these people are right. These people are doing the right thing. Unlike all of the other brokers that we've had come into South Africa, you know, these people are, are doing things right. You know, these people are compliant. These people are multi-regulated type of a thing. They take care of you. And another thing as well, you know, in, in, in the trader's journey and what the broker that I'm aligned with right now does very well, you know, is taking care of the, the, the client after the deposit. You know, um, there has to be, there has to be that, that taking care of the client after the deposit. You know, sometimes you go includes into, your call it retention. You know, okay. internally we call it retention, but then I call it relationship management. Mm. You know, um, having to call a client when they've blown their account. Hey, Sleek, I see you blew your account. You know, is everything okay? Is there anything I can help you with? You know, I see that, okay, you previously used to place trades maybe on 0 0.01. This time around, you placed 0 0.20. Why did you do that? You know, manage your risk beta, you know. That way, you know, the person is not demotivated and gets to the point where they're like, ah, this thing is a scam. And they can't, because a lot of traders have been burnt and churned that way in South Africa that people do something with, with, with a broker, they lose their money and they're like, ah, this forex thing does not work. I'm here to tell you today, it does work. Mm. People do make a living through trading, but then you need to do it in the right way. Mm. You need to get the right type of a broker. There's a gentleman I'm going to introduce to you guys later on, um, Danny Mowers. He's the regional um, director for the broker that um, I'm currently aligned with at the moment. And, you know, I think that, you know, from everything that I've been through in my life, um, you know, I didn't mention it, but then I worked, you know, as an IP for, for numerous other brokers. You know, um, I, I, I tested out a lot of compensation plans. You know, I tested out a lot of, um, how can I say, um, CPA agreements, you know, um, rebates agreements and, and everything. You know, I tested out everything that I could possibly test out until I found these guys. And these guys, you know, were not even offering you a rebate amount. And I'm like, but then... How? And they're like, no, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody does their business in a different way. So, you know, as a company and as a broker, we want to hear from you. What would you like as the partner? Mm -hmm. How can we help you as the partner type of a thing? You tell us now, you know, how you've previously worked. What are you comfortable with? Let us structure something unique to you, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Not everybody's the same. You know, different people get different deals at different brokers, whatever reasons it is. These brokers out there that just throw money at, at IPs and whatever, it's, it's not the point because now what those people are doing, basically, they're in the burn and churn. You know, they throw money at a big influencer that influences crowd of people in there. Obviously, most of the time, call it 90% of the time, those people get burnt. And the person introducing them does not care because they've made their money. Mm -hmm. You know, the brokers made their money and... If it's a broker coming from elsewhere, they they pack and leave. You know, they, they, they've done what they needed to do. And, you know, I feel like right now in South Africa, with the way that legislation is going, I feel like it's going in the right direction. Um, the broker that I'm aligned with, you know, is 100% is, 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 is compliant with new legislation as well. Is it? So how, so how, just before we just wrap it up quickly, how do we then, how would you advise for, for, for someone that's maybe looking to start, or maybe they do have experience in trading, but they don't know what you're talking about in terms of regulation. 
how do they then go out and check um, the regulation and which companies are good and countries are good for, for, for regulation purposes? Okay, um, when it comes to countries, look, you can't put um, um, a country to it. Okay, any country has got a financial services board. Mm -hmm. um, I think that right now, the way that some countries have structured it, because now the, the, the FX thing is, is, is big out there. Mm -hmm. So countries are wanting to protect their people. The people yeah. you know? So if you go to different countries, like for example, if you go to Kenya, you need a license there. If you go to um, Nigeria, you need a license here. Here in South Africa, you need a license. The FSCA license, you know, your FSP mm -hmm. number and everything. So... You know, if you if you if you if you if you're gonna get into bed with a broker, you know, you wanna first find out are they regulated. Mm -hmm. You know, how you can do that if you go if you just Google FSCA, there's a phone number there that you can you can call. There's actually even a search, um, what you call a search panel where you can type in the name of the broker or type in the FSP number, something will come up and then it will tell you whether they process, they've applied, have they got a license and whatever. It will even give you the different categories of the licenses that they have, you know, because right now, you know, our retail trading is derivatives, you know, so obviously, you know, if they telling you open up an account, trade CFDs with us, you know, they have to have, have all of those licensing, mm -hmm. you know, in order for you to, to, to be protected as a trader, you know, in case something goes wrong. So I would always say, go onto the FSCA website, Check them out, research them. Um, you know, if you can, you know, go on to, to to the to the to the platforms out there of traders to say, look, has anybody had an experience with this broker? Although people, you know, that will sort of like give you a lot of stories, but then you know it will give you a feel. Yeah. yeah. But then one thing, you know, you, you base it on is regulation, because right now, you know, there's a lot of money being made in Africa when it comes, you know, to trading. So nobody wants to lose. The South African license. Nobody mm. wants to use. So right now they're protecting those licenses for dear life mm. type yes. of a thing. So if they are regulated, then it means that they are they are most probably doing things right. So do your research again. You know, um, I myself always direct people. You know, to 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 to, to brokers that are established that are you know doing um thing. If you look on my social media, you know, I occasionally post the link there. Um, I've got partners and people that I'm partnered up with, you know, who I'm sort of like, you know, how can I say, getting into the, the, the preparation of how, you know, the new um, legislation of South Africa is going to be because the whole IP thing as well, you know, at some point it's going to be done away with, you know, right now they, it's not going to be introducing book, it's going to be partner, mm -hmm. you know, um, but then, you know, it's things that the FSC are doing there in the background and whatever not, but then, you know, it's just, you know, a question of keep your eyes peeled. The space is changing. And I think that as the space changes, you know, even you as the person and the call it XIB has to change with the times type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, just to wrap it up, um, where, can, where can people get a hold of you on social media and... Yeah, just give out your details so that if someone wants to partner up with you and all that, they can obviously just hit you up. Okay, cool. On on social media, you can find me as Zikode A Mashia. It will be yeah, it's on there. Zikode A Mashia. Um, Zikode is Tarazelo Sam, so that's what I use on on on, on social media. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you can WhatsApp me. I don't have a problem putting out my number there. Okay. Um, people can WhatsApp me. You can catch me on 073-662-8602. 073-662-8602. I'm willing to give out any type of information or anything that you need. You know, my, my, my line is open. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, cool. Thank you for your time, man. Speak. Um, Thanks so much for having me, brother. To your partner, and then we'll just get things going then, okay? Awesome, brother. Thank see you so much. You. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode of Titan FX TV. Peace.